here in Bhutan, mostly the cheese will be a cow cheese. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was good. Welcome to Bhutan. This small Himalayan country located between India and China is known for its unique Buddhist culture. It's a peaceful mountain paradise and it's no wonder people call it the last Shangri-La. But it's also known by a more powerful nickname, the Land of the Thunder Dragon. I'm about to take you into the city of Paro and to the beautiful Ha Valley. We're visiting gorgeous monasteries and temples and trying some of the best food in Bhutan. Emadatsi, Ho and Te, and even spicy animal organs. It's so good, but don't take my word for it. Let's go to Paro and Ha Valley, Bhutan. All right guys, let's go to the gate and let's board this flight. After 27 hours of traveling, I'm finally on my last flight to Bhutan. Three flights to get here, a day and a half of traveling, crazy. And yeah, this is Bhutan Airlines. You know, as soon as the plane arrived, it came from Bangkok, so it pulled up. It was like 12 of us, we all got on, boarded the flight. And that's it, I have an entire order myself. And this window, the left window, is the window you need to get because from here you can see Mount Everest. Once we are like uh, like 40 minutes in, you'll be able to see Mount Everest. That's super, super cool. I've never seen Everest, so I'm excited. And yeah, Bhutan, here we go. 77th country, can't wait. Let's go to Bhutan. So I thought the flight was like an hour and a half, but it's actually 50 minutes. Really, really short flight. And they do serve a quick snack and some juice and water. So we got some apple juices, apple juice from Bhutan. Just like apple juice. Okay. And here we have so like a veg sandwich. This. this is like a, like a sweet bread, right? And we have some ginger snaps and some cookies. Okay, so I guess I'll try the sandwich. A little hungry. So they only have vegetarian options right now. Guys, we arrived in Bhutan. Wow, what an epic, epic journey. And it's 45 degrees Fahrenheit right now. Freezing, Bhutan Airlines, what an epic flight. What a long day, what a long day. 30 plus hours to get here. I'm so excited because I'm gonna be exploring Bhutan for the next 10 days with my Bhutan. This is gonna be just an epic trip. I've been dreaming about this trip my entire life. Guys, I am so excited. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. 
you did just give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below and subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content. I'll see you in the next travel food adventure in Bhutan. Yes, let's do it. Hello. Welcome to Bhutan. Thank you, thank you. Good morning, everyone. I hope you're all doing amazing. This is David Hoffman from David's Bin here in beautiful Bhutan in the Himalayas. I am so excited. I've been dreaming of coming here my entire life. I'm gonna be spending the next 10 days with my Bhutan, traveling throughout the entire country. And here I'm with my guide. Zangpo. Welcome to Bhutan. Awesome, and what's this? It's a welcoming scarf. In order to welcome someone to our beautiful country, the scarf, you can put it on. Uh, put it on? Yes. It's a super nice, guys. And today what we're gonna do is we're actually driving. We landed in Paro International Airport, one of the most difficult airports in the world to land in. But right now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go quickly to Paro to the town to get like a quick breakfast. And then we're gonna drive like two plus hours to another town. What's the name of the town? Punaka. Punaka? Punaka. Punaka. And in Punaka, we're gonna have lunch. Oh, I can't wait. Guys, I'm so excited. Let's go, let's go. I love the temperature too. It's like 45 degrees Fahrenheit. It's perfect. When the sun's out, it's really good. Sring Yutu. So Sring Yutu is our driver for the entire trip as well. So it's us three for 10 days. Yes. Oh man, I can't wait, man. I can't wait. <laughs> can't wait to see food, monasteries, hikes, festival. Yes. It's gonna be incredible. Today, we will be directly going to the fortress of Punaka. The festival is happening there, so we are going to witness some festival today. And this is Paro Town, as you can see. Beautiful traditional buildings, lots of handicrafts everywhere, handicraft markets, and then we're going over here. What's your breakfast? Oh, Momos. Momos, if you need, yes. And the tea, I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give you the traditional butter tea. I love this cafe, it's really nice. It's 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 like modern yet yeah. traditional. Yeah. It's you have these tables with these low couches. Oh, it's great, dude. And in Bhutan, we have like different kinds of momo. We have non-veg. So non-veg it comprises of chicken, beef, pork. Veg we have cheese momo. We have potatoes momo. And one thing that he was telling me is that there's a lot of spice here, lots of chilies, and they also have chilies and cheese. Yes. Lots of cheese as well. It's like a yes. country that loves cheese. Everything goes with cheese, and they try to put some chilies in it. So it's called salted butter tea, suja. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's very buttery. Yeah. It's like. It's just like they melted an entire stick of butter and they salted it too. <laughs> Ooh, I mean, this is heavy, right? Yes, <laughs> we have a different kind of tea leaf. Then we just boil the water and put the tea leaf. Once it's been boiled completely, we put butter, salt, and we churn it. So he's saying that people say it tastes like a soup. The reason why it tastes like a soup or the comparison is because it's thick, very thick. Mm. And piping hot. Ooh, it's hot. So what do we have? Momo, we call it dumplings. And we have like two different kinds of dumplings here. One, it's chicken momo. And the other one, it's cheese momo. And here, the chili paste, or we call it the chili salsa. Okay, so which one's cheese, which one's chicken? The long one. The long yes, one? This is cheese. These are cheese right here. Yes. It's a processed cheese. Yes. It's gonna dip it into some of this. Here in Bhutan, mostly the cheese will be a cow cheese. Mm-hmm. Oh, that was good. Mmm. Another spice. Not too hot? Not too hot? Okay. Not too hot. It's a nice, like, almost creamy mm -hmm. chili paste. Mmm. And over here, we have the chicken. Usually, <clears throat> When they make the chili paste, they put the chili, onion, tomato, mm -hmm. everything, and they grind it and make it into a powder. And they put some oil or some water. I, I spoke too early. It is a little hot. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little hot. Mm. What a breakfast though. This is exactly what I want for breakfast every day. Dumplings, Bhutanese style. So momos are basically the Indo-Chinese version in India. Obviously dumplings in China. Here it's also dumplings. Yes. So T's telling me that I should use my hands. So I use some hand sanitizer, wash my hands, and I'll grab some of this. 
Get some of that heat. Mmm. No, it needs more, man. <laughs> like that. Mmm. Mmm. Spicy and delicious. <laughs> what a way to start my trip in Bhutan. Mmm. Incredible breakfast. We have a almost three hour drive, right? Yes. Three hour drive. I'm excited. This is how Bhutan is though. Bhutan's obviously in the mountains, so everything's like an hour to a five hour drive, and we're only staying on the western side of the country for these entire 10 days. Central and Eastern are a little more complex, a lot more roads, like a lot more winding roads, a lot more mountains. If you really wanted to see the entire country, I would say do at least three weeks, at least. Ready to go? Very good, my friend. Very good. Loved it. Woo! What a day. Beautiful day. And it's called Champang, Champaka Cafe. Thank you. So we came into the shop to buy a hat because the one I have on is way too hot. This is like for like blizzard weather. Hey, how you doing? Wow. That's it? That's awesome. All right, guys, so let me try this on. So this is the flag of Bhutan in a beanie. It says Bhutan right here. I actually don't love that it says Bhutan, but I'll take it. <laughs> 350, right? <laughs> Look at the masks. Oh, these are the masks. Look yeah. at these. These are amazing. I'm gonna buy, how much is for this one? 8,500. 8,500? Yeah. New hat. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's better, because the other one's way too hot. Way too hot. David, now we are three hours dry, but on the way we are going to stop we are going to see something let's hope that we have a very good weather today in order to see the Bhutan tallest mountain that is called as Gunker Pinsum so the road's going to be just like this for the next two and a half hours just a winding road crossing through the mountain and over here to the right we actually have the river of Paro and a lot of farmland over there we have some like rice paddy fields yeah. I see some cow over there the river here it's called as Pachu. Pa means a shorter version for Paro, so we call it Pachu. And the river, it goes all the way down to India. And we have a paddy field here, and the rice, it takes 100 days to grow. And the rice grown in Bhutan are not the white rice, it is the red rice. And David, we are going to test the red rice later. So it, it's red rice, so is that that's not basmati or jasmine, no, right? No. It's no. a different one. It's a different one, wow. And I, this is like epic. Look at this, look at the views. Whoa, man. The river, the heat. It's like 45 degrees outside, but if you close the car and you let the sun just cook you, you start <laughs> getting really hot. <laughs> the area is called Chuzom, which means the meeting of two rivers. The river coming from Thimpu and the river coming from Paro. So it meets here. So it meets right here. Yeah. We're crossing the bridge, wow. I had to stop, guys, I had to, look at this. As we drive here on these winding roads along the mountain, you're always next to the river. You're always gonna get spots like this where you can just look over and admire this gorgeous land. Look at this, Bhutan, so amazing. This is why I came. Oh, woo! Chili and cheese? Buy it. What you want to eat? Eat? Yes. No, you tell me, man. Not mm. Yeah. Hello. So you said this is cheese, right? Right, yeah. Cheese. Soft mindu. You give a try. So this is dry yak cheese. Oh my god. It's so hard. 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 I've actually tried something like this in Uzbekistan. In a big ball. This is the Bhutanese chewing gum. And so you just you just chew for a while. The tea leaf, which is made for, which is used in order to make the butter tea. This is the one, the tea leaf. We have the roasted rice or the pulp rice. You take this with milk tea. We have a flattened corn. We have a rice ball, popcorn, dried apple, dried eggplant. And there's chilies over there. I can't chew this. <laughs> I think what has to happen is that it has to just like your saliva just has to like soak into it like a sponge. Mmm, not so bad. Pretty good. 
And this is like a mini mini mart, right, on the street. Cool. Oh, and they have, they have booties. Booties right here. So I'm also gonna try another one, but this one's a little harder. Oh! Hi. I'll buy you two. Mm -hmm. All right. I'll take this one on the road. Good morning everyone, I hope you're all doing well. This is David Hoffman from David's Bin here coming at you from Timpu Bhutan. Today I'm actually driving west, three and a half hours to Havali. Havali is the second least populated place in the country. Only 14,000 people live there. And on the way, it's really, really winding roads through the mountains and we're actually gonna cross on the highest pass in the country, 4,000 meters high. And we're gonna stop for breakfast. Stop at a local restaurant where uh, they will serve us some Bhutanese food. Well, it's not really chili cheese. We're gonna get some easy, easy every time. Ha Valley will be a different experience for you. Until 2002, Ha Valley was not open for the Westerner, for the tourists. So only in 2002 it was open. And we shall walk around the town of Ha Valley, where I would say you could see more shopkeepers than a customer. You could see lots of shop, but less customer. And the special thing about Ha Valley is they will make you a dumpling that is made from the buckwheat and inside the dumplings they will put you the dry turnip leaves. So in other areas where you had dumplings it was made with the ordinary flour and inside they either have meat or some different kinds of vegetables but the one which you are going to eat in Ha Valley will be completely different. And in Ha Valley, we have like two oldest temples which was built in 7th century. So the name of the temple is called as Lagang Karpo and Narpo, which means white temple and black temple. And it is also the second least populated district in Bhutan. This is the main highway that connects east and west of the country. From here, you can connect to Paro. Obviously, that's where you come in on the airport. It's the only international airport in the country. And this road, as you can see, it's really high up, above the valley, above the river. And it's really windy. There's restaurants, there's small communities, and there's a lot of these like small like hut vendors that sell the cheese and the fruits and the vegetables. And what's the name of that cheese again? The dry yak cheese. The dry yak cheese, yeah. Chuko. So Chuko, uh, I'm not gonna have it again because I almost broke a tooth because it's really really hard. So some are like harder than others. So what you do is you put it in your mouth and you just you chew and you let your saliva just soak it up and then eventually it breaks it down. But that's sort of how it works. And yeah, so we're just looking for a restaurant. It's, uh, it's really early though. It's 8.35 in the morning. He was saying that roughly everything opens around 9 a.m. So we probably won't have any any restaurant options until then. So we just made a right at this river. And if you keep going straight that way, you go straight to the border town with India. And what's the name of the town? Pinsoling. Okay, Pinsoling. Yes. And that's on that road. Yes. The road on the other side. So this is we're gonna eat right here. This is great. So there's like a, a vendor, but he's also a mini restaurant. So there's all the food right here, right? Great. Easy? 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 Easy, easy. Yeah, they do have. Perfect. Here we have the outer skin of the yak, which we call it ko. This is give the tribe the stomach. Lungs. It's a beef sausage. This is pork sausage. This is beef and these two are pork sausage. So basically this is a non-veg, spicy non-veg breakfast. You can go with tripe. I think I should try some sausage, maybe some tripe too. It looks great. So when you're entering the shop, as you can see right here, you have the dry yak cheese. Everyone's different, you know, it depends on the vendor. Some are harder, some are softer. I mean, if you want to try it, definitely do, but be aware that you can't just bite into it, you can break a teeth. And here I got some milk tea. Mm. They always drink the butter tea. I prefer this. Cheers, my friend. It's another great day in Bhutan. It's actually really cold today. Mm. Super cold today. We're like right next to this fire. Are you cold? I'm good. You? I don't feel cold when I sit near to the heating strip. <laughs> Only like when you open the window, I feel cold. I have to say, this is probably the most exotic breakfast I've ever had. So I have lungs, so beef lungs right here. This is tripe, so stomach, beef stomach, and then 
two pork sausages, right? On the bottom, I think that's more lungs, right? And then over here, we have some chilies, and we have the chai. So I'll probably just start off with the sausage. Mmm. Oh wow. Super spicy. It tastes like morcilla. It's like blood sausage. Nice and juicy. Very dense. That was blood sausage, right? Pork blood sausage? Okay. I thought it was just pork sausage, but that was awesome. Hmm. I might have to have another one of those. And then here, we have the lungs. <laughs> hey, so am I supposed to mix this with chilies? If you want to add more. Yeah. Alright, so I'm gonna try the lungs. Mm. It's good. It has the same like consistency of um of like the kidney, right? Bro, so soft. Mmm. Oh, spicy. So this is a numbing spice. So good man. This is like almost like a clan. Easy to eat, love the spice level. And my friend was saying is that because this is at the intersection here, I'm you know crossing the river, a lot of people stop here, a lot of Bhutanese, to buy sausage. This is like a famous spot for sausages and organs, spicy. Mm. This is so good. Wow. Next up, we have the tripe. I love the tripe. For me, it's like the kidney and the liver are the, my favorites, but in the stomach is second, you know. The one thing I don't love are intestines. That's like the one thing I don't love, but gotta say, the lungs are great. Mm hmm. Mmm. Mmm. The stomach is. It's a little hard to eat, but super good. Actually, feels just like, like pure, like flesh. Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna get some more spice on it. Mm. So it actually tastes like a flank steak. Mm. Very tough. It's almost like a like a medium, like a you know almost overcooked steak. Because the flesh portion, the other side, it's really like Almost a gelatin like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I just gotta get some more of this though. No. Not so spicy. It's more just like a chili paste, right? Yeah. It's not the easy. Usually, the chili paste which you are eating is made from chili powder. So, with the chili powder, they tend to like add some onion, tomato, then they put some oil, mostly water, and Salt. That's it. It's a very easy way to make chili paste. And this is basically the same sausage I had before. <laughs> so good. I'm gonna try it with some chili paste. This is one of my favorite morcillas ever. Blood sausage. Wow, dude, for sure. This is like one of my favorites. It's the sausage, the bloody. Mmm. So tasty. And this is just more lungs. Look at all that spice. Numbing spice, pure delicious lungs. Wow, this one's actually a little harder to eat, but still very good. Mm, spice, spice level here, uh, scale of 110, probably like a seven. Mm. Chili paste. What a delicious non-veg breakfast. Mm. Lots of chilies. Whew. Now I have some porridge, calm it all down. Look at this porridge. Mmm. Oh yeah. It's pretty good. I'm not a huge fan of porridge, but this one is uh, it's nice, it's light, it's basically a soup. Uh, usually the porridge at home, we how we cook it is the ordinary rice. The rice, we put water and we boil it, we cook it until the rice get cooked and when the rice get cooked completely we put more water then we add some paneer that is a kind of a cheese and we add salt a little bit of chili powder and the porridge is ready so like my friend said basically they get the rice 
they boil it. Once it's cooked, they add more water. Then they add paneer, which is cottage cheese. If you haven't been to India, anybody who eats veg in India eats mostly paneer. Cottage cheese is really, really delicious. That's what I just had right now, like big chunks in here. Then they add some chili. It, it's pretty good, it's like slimy. Mmm. Whole different taste. Wow, it's good. Mmm. Oh, still very hot. Ooh, and you feel the chilies. <coughs> I've never had porridge with chilies before. Thanks guys, thank you, thank you. All right, we did it. How long do we have? Three hours. Okay, damn. So this is only half an hour? Only took us half an hour to get here? Felt like forever. Right here, there's a sign that shows the height is to the left. And actually, that road is under construction. If it wasn't under construction, it would only take us like three hours from there, three and a half hours. But right now, except because it's under construction, really bumpy road, lots of rocks, lots of places where they're not really complete, so you have to go really, really slow. So it'll take like roughly six, seven hours. So we're going this way. Pado is about 25, 30 minutes from here. And then from there, two hours up and then down into the mountains in the valley. Yes. You excited? I am. Are you? Super. <laughs> I'm ready, dude. A new place. I can't wait. The name of the village is called Shaba. Shaba. S H A B A. And now you could see the field has been tilled. It is in order to put potatoes, chili, <coughs> the seed of chili, and some vegetables that they could grow in this season. What you see here just rice fields tons of rice fields lots of houses you see some stupas as well and that is like right outside of Pado. so we're entering Pado in about five minutes so we just made a left onto this bridge and now we're in route to ha if we would have gone straight Pado is seven kilometers that way this is the road to ha yes the area is called bongde bongde and the straight road it goes to the town or to the airport and from here we had a junction which goes to the town of Paro and to Ha Valley in the front. And as you can see, we're making our way up now, yes, going up the have, mountain. Yes. So we have to go up the mountain and go around some of these mountains to really, really high peaks. And then we have a super winding road. If yes. you see it on Google Maps, it's extremely winding. Those weren't wild? No. In Bhutan, we don't have any wild horses. All the horses are domesticated. It must belong to someone from this village. So during daytime, they set their animals free so that they can graze everywhere. And later in the evening, they go back, they collect their cattle and horses. This is what most people, they do here in Bhutan. So we have uh, two hours going up like this. Look, look, viewpoint of Paro, let me see, can we see? Oh, look at this, viewpoint of Paro. Paro is right over there. As you can see the fortress in the backdrop, you have all the mountains, snow-capped mountains in the top, some monasteries over there. And that's it guys, let's continue. So it's a one lane, right? So only if it's one car. So when there's other cars, what you have to do is you have to veer to the side, get really, really close to the edge so they can pass. Then there's sometimes there's some, some spots where you can actually park, right? Yeah. Wow, incredible views, but two hours like this, if you, uh, if you get like car sick, mm -hmm. there's definitely get car sick on this one. Yeah. Well, this is the windiest road I've ever been on, man. I'm getting tired, like falling asleep, but then I get woken up from every time he turns or hits the horn. <laughs> <laughs> and my friend T's telling me that during winter, sometimes they close this road for like a month because of heavy snowfall. And obviously, I mean, if it's snow here, you can't even move. This is like, this is crazy. And we're actually gonna see some snow right now because on the top of the mountain, like the very, very top, as you can see over here, lots of snow. We're gonna get there, it's still about an hour away, right? Something like that. Yeah. Ah, man, this is this is tough. This is a tough road. <laughs> no, I'm serious, man. People that get car sick would not like this. Cat leopard. Ja Z. So mostly this cat leopard, they come to the village and they eat lots of roosters and ham. As you can see, there's snow up here. So basically it's like slush because it didn't snow last night. It snowed like last week, you said, right? Yeah. So lots of snow over here to the left, to the right. And as we make our way up, you can see over there, tons of snow. Oh man, that trail is completely full of snow. Yeah, man, I'm from Miami. I see snow like maybe once a year, so I'm super happy when I do. Like, we're gonna have a snowball fight, you and me? Sure. <laughs> in this area, the roads are pretty bad because in order to let the snow melt faster, the roadside worker, they put lots of salt in the snow. That's why, because of the salt, the road 
becomes becomes bad, bumpy, and in Bhutan you really don't have to do other massage. You do get the massage in the car, a free massage. <laughs> so yeah, as you were saying, the roads become uh, really really bad. It was paved the whole way until we got to where the snow is, and then here we go. I mean, it's just like a uh, dirt muddy road with a few potholes, some rocks. Oh, and really bumpy. Bhutanese massage. <laughs> Just close your eyes. <laughs> okay, so we're stopping here because there's so much snow and we're gonna have a little a little snow fight. You ready? <laughs> <laughs> Time to do a little snow fight. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Ah. <sighs> My hands are frozen. Oh. Our hands are ice. See you back in the car. I'm done. <laughs> And that, my friends, was a yak. Yes. And here, oh, more yaks? More yaks. Yaks everywhere. So we're almost at the very top, and over here to the right, it's super clear, and you can see the second highest mountain in Bhutan. What's the name of it? Jomul Hari. Jomul Hari. And the elevation, the height of the mountain, the second tallest mountain is 7,314 meters above sea level. And we made it to the highest pass in Bhutan, Chelela. Here we are. What's up, man? How you doing? So, how about over here? Gotta be careful with this flush. It's a little slippery. Some snow. Here we have prayer flags. And over there to the left, we have Paro. And it's like the highest mountain in Bhutan. <gasps> Exercise. <laughs> <laughs> Zero or negative one or two because it's too cold. My hands are freezing. Over here, let's check out Ha Valley. Incredible. What a view. What? Epic spot. So the one we came up was winding, but this one's extremely winding. This one's like a snake. Like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's basically it. You come here, take photos, admire the views. It's really cold. Bring a jacket. Bring gloves if, you, if it's like, uh, like right now it's March. If you're here in February, or November. Bring gloves, a scarf as well. Ooh, I'm too cold. So I was climbing, but I had to stop because. There's a yak here and he's not really he's not really friendly. He's a little angry. <laughs> oh my god. And the altitude here, dude, you can feel the altitude. Like losing my breath. Can't catch it. There's multiple spots you can visit here. You can go up here where everybody is, or you can go on the other side. Just thousands of prayer flags and incredible views. Whew. All right, let's continue our way to High Valley. Oh man, so much slush. <laughs> oh, man. So the ride down is less than an hour. Oh my god. <laughs> it's less than an hour to get down. The road is like this. Super winding. They literally cut it out of the rock, right? Mm -hmm. <sighs> Woo! The altitude. Dude, it's so high. Just like 25 kilometers. I, I know, but I haven't I haven't felt the, the height like this in a while. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <sighs> you can actually get sick if you stay up here, you know? So only 25 kilometers to get down to Ha. And the views, I mean, just beautiful. You have more mountains over there. And how far is China, Tibet from here? All the way up? Uh, no idea. No idea, it's but it's, like it's over there, it's north. There, so. Yeah, but it's north. Yeah. It's north of here. Okay, great views, man. Very little snow on this side, and obviously that's because it gets a lot of sunlight. The places we were on the other side were way too much in the shade, like in the forest. From Ha, we have a trail called Sagala Trail. It directly comes out to Baro. We can even do it a one day hike, which is like eight to nine hours, or we can even do it as one night camping. So you can walk for like four hours, pitch a camp, stay there, and the next day you come out from Baro. That's pretty amazing. So if you're into hiking, you can do that. You can come either from Paro to Ha or Ha to Paro. You can go straight nine hours or you know, set up shop and, uh, and stay the night. I think staying the night would be awesome. Yes. Up there, roast some marshmallows by the fire. 
Marshmallow? <laughs> Stop. I'm joking. <laughs> maybe, maybe yak. So we're stopping really quick at this viewpoint to see Hava Valley in all its glory. Wow. So right here in front of us, we have the military base, all the greenhouses. And over there to the right is the town. You can see the valley is very, very long. Mountains on the top. And over here, we have a monastery to the very left with the red house, right? Red roof, right? That's the monastery. Wow. Woo! So we arrived to Ha. As soon as you make it to the bottom of the mountain, you pass the monastery, military base area, and then the town. The town's right in front of us. As you can see, lots of mountains, beautiful trees, not that many people. Like you said, only 14,000 people here. So that's it guys, we started off in Timpu this morning. We drove three and a half hours to Ha Valley. I mean, really epic drive. We stopped around halfway in to have some breakfast. I had some delicious, like basically organ breakfast. It's like Bhutanese street food with spices, all organs though. I had uh, pork blood sausage, I had uh, tripe, and I had lungs. Gotta say the lungs were the best, and, and uh, the blood sausage is really good as well. And I had porridge, but this porridge had some paneer and some chilies. And then from there, we drove all the way past Paro, made our way up, super winding road, and we got to the top, lots of snow, and we made it to the Chalela. Chalela. Yeah. Chalela, so Chalela Pass, which is basically the highest pass in the country, 3,900 and something uh, meters. Almost 4,000. Yeah, almost 4,000 meters. Beautiful spot from there, you see both Ha Valley and Paro Valley snow it's windy it's cold definitely bring you know a beanie a scarf gloves if it's you know if it's between november and february when it's really really cold during winter and then we came down to have valley and that is it guys i hope you love this video if you did please give me a thumbs up leave me a comment below subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content i'll see you in the next travel food adventure in ha peace What's good everyone? I hope you're all doing well. This is David Hoffman from David's Bin here coming at you from Ha Valley in Bhutan, one of the least populated areas in the country. And what I want to do today is I want to show you everything you can do and see in this town. We're going to start off right here at the Pedling Restaurant, which is a traditional Bhutanese restaurant. We're going to eat some good food. And then from there, we're going to walk around the town. We're going to see some shops. And then we're going to hike to a monastery, about a 30 minute hike, see the monastery. And we're finally going to end with some delicious dinner at my hotel. We're going to eat some dumplings, traditional hot dumplings. I'm very excited. How are you guys? Come, the foods are getting cold. <laughs> <laughs> wow, what a feast. Check this out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven different things. I think I'm gonna start off right now with potato, chili, and beef. Good enough. Some chili cheese. This one has, so it has red chilies, green chilies, and cheese. We got some radish and chilies. If you want, you can just put the chilies to the side. I don't need to eat that many today. Well, I guess I've got a few. Let's get one of these dumplings. Can't wait. And here we have these potato balls. So I'm gonna jump into the chili cheese first. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's spicy. It's, it hits you right away, yeah. Super spicy. It's creamy and spicy. Mm, it's fantastic. Whoa, because this, this is all chilies. Mm. Huh. I need some chai. Mm, that was super spicy. Oh, delicious though. Mm. Nice. Let's jump on this beef. So there's a moist beef, not dry. And what you should do, grab a piece of potato. Here we go. Mmm. Mmm. Nice mushy potatoes, super tender beef. And the beef isn't spicy. It has a little bit of spice, you can see. A little bit of the seeds, but... Perfect. Next, let's jump onto the radish. Mm. Radish isn't that bad in terms of spice. I personally love all the veggies here. Oh, nice radish. Mm. Now you feel the spice. But if you want to get you know more adventurous, just get in with that red chili. Mm-hmm. Mm. That one wasn't hot at all. If you want to really get hot, go in here. Mm hmm. Oh. Spicy. 
And then right here, we have some tomatoes. So one thing I really haven't eaten that much. Mm. Oh, nice. Nice, very moist tomatoes. They're creamy as well. I'm sure they put cheese in it. They put cheese in everything. Next up, I'm trying what I came here for. The dumplings, but with dumplings with turnip inside. Mmm. Oh yeah. Delicious turnip leaves. Mmm, but we so different. Mmm. It's like a little more bitter. Mmm. I need another one. Oh, this is so good. Dude, these are great. I wanna add some spice to it. Fifty. See, you can see the inside turnip leaves. Tastes very similar to cabbage. Oh, it's just different. Oh, yeah. This is like a numbing heat right here. Mm. These are the best dumplings of the trip. Wow, it's so good. Best dumplings. She surprised me with a little bit of ara. Mm hmm. This one that tastes a little different because they put the bark, a little bit of tree in there. Mmm, very earthy. Love it. Oh, the color pink. And here we go, the potato fritter. Mmm. Basically, it's just mushy potatoes, fried. It's pretty good. Oh, has spice. <laughs> For me, my two favorite things here: the dumplings and the chili cheese. Mmm. So chili, cheese, and a dumpling. Mm. And this is my favorite chili cheese. So hot, but so creamy. What you have to come here for are these. The turnip leaves. Oh, and they're so soft and delicate. So these dumplings are called hinte, which are basically dumplings, but with dumplings with turnip inside. So I've tried everything except the papad, which is basically the same thing as in India. Mm -hmm. There's also rice and dal. Mm. This is great. This is actually like exactly like India. Mm. A little creamy, lots of veg, tomato. I mean, the best thing to do is mix it with the rice, but I need to lay low on the rice. I'm making way too much rice. All right, that was an epic meal. Lots of good food, very spicy. Now we're gonna go explore the town, the village of Ha. Ha Ha Ha, H-A-A. The population of Ha Valley is only around 14,000 people. And now they must be having like 3,000 hosts. In the town of Ha, you could actually see more shopkeepers than customers. So this is it, this is the main part of the town. On each side of the road, there's these three-story buildings. Usually it's three stories, and how it works is the bottom is like a general store, like a grocery store or a shop. Top, the middle, is the second uh, level, that is a restaurant. And then the uh, third level is a house. That's sort of how it is. And they don't actually own the building, so the restaurant owner doesn't own it. The owner of the of the apartment doesn't own it. Somebody owns the building and everybody rents. Yes. And these are all traditional houses, really beautiful houses. That's a uh, weekend market, a vegetable market. Oh, on the weekends? Yeah. So this is what a general shop looks like. Basically, it's a mini market, right? A mini grocery store. They have food, lots of like snacks, water, sodas. They have like toys for kids. They have gloves, they have hats, they have balls. I mean, that's basically what you see here. So every single one is almost the same, just like this. That's it, general shop. This is the end of the town. Now what we have to do, we just go back down. We have a small suspension bridge, cross the suspension bridge, walk through by the side of the river, we go all the way down to the table. I mean, I love the town in terms of architecture. Mm -hmm. It's really traditional. Yes. It's old school. And how old is this town, do you know? A few centuries, right? A few centuries. Okay. So I came into another general shop because this one has these darts. These are the big darts, the ones you throw like really, really far. And then he has some stuff here hanging. This is all like Buddhist stuff, right? And then you have the arrows, and then over there we have some Buddhas, some cups, and that's basically what these stores are all about. This one's a little different because this is not like a, a market. This is more like um, 
Buddhist stuff, more religious stuff, and a few things for, you know, for games and stuff, for like, you know, the archery, etc. Hello. So my friend here has these keychains. So we have tiger, dragon, and this one is to fend off evil spirits, yeah. the, the skull. I like the skull a lot. Okay, and it's 250 each? Yes. Okay, so I'll take this one. This shop, it sells only the Buddhist products. Not really the products, the Buddhist things that is really need for the home or for the families. And then the candles there as well. That's not a candle. Oh, it's no? an incense stick. Oh, it's incense stick. Sorry, I couldn't see it there. Okay. 250. Thank you. Karinche. Suspension bridge. Let's go. I love the traditional houses here. This is so different from Bunaka, Dinku, Baro. bridge so this is the suspension bridge the river there's another one farther down this is the one you take the beginning of the town cross it and you go all the way left and over there is the monastery right yeah Woo it's cold dude it's freezing You're, yeah because look what you have on <laughs> you like a parka are you feeling cold freezing oh that's statue what a difference in temperature from the bridge to here. Yeah. It's like it's like 10 degrees colder there. The wind just is crazy. It's so much. <laughs> Dude, that's the windiest place we've been to. Oh, thank God I brought a scarf. I know it's cold when I see you put on a sweater. <laughs> <laughs> it's a small temple of this locality. So in Bhutan, every locality, they have their own local temple. It's one of them. So it's a very small temple two buildings over here we have a prayer bell yeah. and here more flags so what's the difference between the white one and the old colors the white prayer flags here the bunch of white prayer flags usually it is for a dead person for one dead person we try to like put 108 numbers of white prayer flags so white it is purification of karma in order to have a next good life the family members they put 108 numbers of white prayer flags for the dead person. So when you see white prayer flags like this, 108 to be exact, that's for one dead person. And it says a prayer, that's all it says. These actually have, you know, pictures of gods, right? Stupas, different things. Woo -hoo -hoo! It's too cold. I know, my nose, <laughs> my neck. Oh, walking around, walking along this river. Oh, it's too cold. If for sure this is like zero. Yeah, it has to be. Yeah, and tonight it's gonna be like negative five. So it's gonna be roughly like 28 degrees. Luckily, I'll be in my room with the heater on. <laughs> the river here in Ha Valley is called as Hachu. And most of the river in Bhutan, it comes from the northern part. So northern part where we have lots of snow-capped mountain. And the river, it flows all the way to India, mostly to Brahmaputra. So if you guys don't know, the Brahmaputra River flows through the state of Assam, through to Bangladesh, and it empties out down there, right? And uh, so if you go, if you go to Assam, Guwahati, Tezpur, <coughs> Majuli Island, there you can see the Brahmaputra River. We have like a 20, 30 minutes. I will be at the monastery. So we just finished the hike on the trail. Now we made it to the road. And I didn't know this, but there's actually a golf course here, a nine hole golf course, but there's a private golf course for the military. So you can't just come here and play. It's only for the military. Walking through right now, there's some construction here. And the monastery is the end of this street, right? That's the golf course here. I hope you have seen like lots of obstacles. The wind itself is an obstacle, but you could see wires trees, river, right? Am I right? I mean, the wind alone is going to be impossible to hit the ball. Yeah. You just fly back. <laughs> this building you see behind us is the Fortress of Ha. It is now a military base. And when was it built? The actual fortress, it was built in 1895. 
it has been burned down completely in 1913 and again in 1915 they started reconstructing a new one and here we have a stupa you can actually walk through very unique i haven't seen one like this before mandala actually it means teaching of impermanence but this mandala it's a architectural map of a god of compassion you could see a god in the mirror so it's the god of compassion now we pass the stupa the wind has intensified Lots of dust. We made it to the temple. So it's called the White Temple, right? White Temple, and this is it right here to the right. Huge wall, and inside the temple. Okay, it's like in every temple, take off the hat. A king of Tibet, he was called as King Songsun Gempo, and there was a prophecy that he should build 108 temples. And he chose Ha Valley in order to build two temples. So in order to find an area, to build the temple, what he did is that he had a white pigeon and a black pigeon. He set it free. So the white pigeon has landed in this area and he chose to build the white temple in this area. So before building the temple and while they were building the temple, a group of people from nowhere, they came. So in our language, we call it Ha Tom, which means all of the sudden. And that's how the temple or how the valley got the name Ha from Hantum all of the sudden and the black pigeon it landed like 10 minutes away from here when you walk it will take around 10 minutes to that temple we have a village over there the black pigeon has landed there and he chose to build the black temple in that area by looking at the color you could make it out which one is white temple and which one is black temple so the temple is made up of a courtyard massive courtyard over here to the right and to the left you see residences of the monks here, at the very top, you have the temple, and in the temple, you have the statue of the god of longevity. And that's basically it for the temple. Now we're gonna hike 10 minutes up to the black temple. Dude, this is great. What an experience. You gotta be careful though. The mothers get mad. No more cows. And this is a steep hike. <laughs> you gotta love it though. Mutan, it's all about the hikes. Oh. <laughs> Hat off. Here we go, this is the black temple. Very small compared to the white temple. Yeah. Like, minuscule. A so third. This, this is where the black pigeon has landed and he chose to build the black temple in this area. So the white temple is ginormous in comparison to the black temple. This is like one room, like one of the monks' houses. That's basically what the black temple is. Obviously the difference is the color and size. And this is it. So what's inside it? Inside we have a statue of Jo, jo Jampa, Maitreya Buddha, the future Buddha. We have a statue of Guru Rinpoche, the second Buddha, and we also have a statue of the unifier, Shabdrung. And the people in this area, they say that because of the statue of future Buddha, the life of the people in, the, in this area has been saved from epidemics and famine. Famine, right? That's it. We saw the black temple, walked around it. You can see the village right here. See some boulders. Beautiful grounds. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna make our way all the way down, get in the car, and go to the hotel, and check it out. I don't even know where I'm staying yet. We'll learn right now. We will be staying in a resort called Rixum. This is one of the best resorts in Ha Valley. Like I said, Ha Valley is open for tourists only in the year 2002, so not much resort we have in Ha Valley. From the White Temple to my hotel, it's like a 10 minute drive. As you can see, we're passing through everything that we walked, and now we're gonna cross over, you know, over the river to the other side, and we're going up a hill, and basically this is all farmland. And he was telling me they produce a lot of apples here, and they export it to where? Bangladesh. To Bangladesh, okay. So, it's apples and, you know, other type of uh, vegetables. Buckwheat. Buckwheat. Wheat. Also wheat, buckwheat, and here we go. This is the resort. We made it, Risum Resort. So right here, we have the lobby behind me, restaurant, and these are the rooms. There's 14 to be exact. Mine is right here, number 13. Check out this room. Right when you enter, you have a living room. Two couches, a table, and everything here is wood. Wooden ceiling, wooden walls, 
wooden chairs, wooden, wooden everything. And then over here we have the bedroom. Beautiful, lots of space, king size bed. We have a TV. We have an area here I can just sit down and work, so like a little desk area. And over here's the bathroom. Nice and spacious. Love that they put the heater on. Oh, and here, so we have a bathtub and we have a shower, so we have both. Got the heater right here for hot water. Toilet, faucet, perfect. All right guys, I'm gonna take a break. Uh, it's like 4.30 now, we're having dinner at 6.30. I'm gonna probably have some more dumplings, some chili cheese. Let's see what we eat. All right, I'm gonna take a nap. Now it's really, really cold. Must be like negative five or something. Woo, so chilly. Wow, that's something you have to know about. Ha, it's windy, it's cold. Oh man, I'm excited though. I'm hungry, 6.30. Dinner time, dumplings, chili cheese, maybe some easy. Hey. My man here just uh, served me the biggest portion of dumplings I've ever seen. Look, I got 20 pieces. I got 10 fried, 10 steamed, mm. chili cheese, got chili paste, yeah. I have a glass of ara. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you got to do with the ara. <laughs> and then here I have some chai, and the reason I have chai is to calm down the heat, because I'm gonna mix a lot of heat here, right? So how do I do it? Just put it on, put yeah. some chili, that's it? Yeah. So I'm gonna try this one first because I haven't tried the fried one yet. Mm -hmm. So you think I should just get some of this? Okay. And just put it on top? Yeah. Good one? Mm. Mm hmm. Have food. It's, it's a lot of food. Is, it's all mine? Yeah. Oh man, this is good. Mm hmm. This actually feels like a, like a fried empanada. Okay. Mm hmm. So tasty, oily, love this man. Mm-hmm. Mm. And the best part is adding the chili. Chili paste isn't that hot. That's gonna be hot. I mean it's only me, right? Yeah. So well, I'll do half. Let's see let's see how hot it is. <laughs> Grab a little bit. Mm. Oh. I love how cheesy it is. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Oh, it's spicy, but it's good. Mm. I feel like the cheese is a little different. It's a different type of cream. Oh, wow. <coughs> Processed cheese? Oh, it's hot. <laughs> so, next, grab one of these. Steamed. Yeah, I'll definitely minimize the heat. I'm going to do it with no chilies. Mm. This one, in terms of the ones I had earlier, are bigger. You're not really supposed to cut it up, but nah. Mm. 25. I actually like this one the best. Yeah, yeah, it's, and you can see like here, you see everything has been like crispy. I mean, for me, it's like breakfast, right? So, should I get some chili cheese on top? What do you think? A little bit right there. Oh, it's like a, a lot of chilies. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, wow. What combination? Obviously, fried's always gonna be tastier. Mm. For me, the best thing in China is dumplings. My favorite, the xiaolongbao in uh, Shanghai. But this one's like incredible. Setting so some chili cheese on top. Mm, nice and spicy and creamy. If you love dumplings, you love veg, you have chilies and, and cheese, this is for you. Basically, I named every ingredient here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this ara is good, man. Look at this. Clear. Super clear. I love ara. Rice wine. When I was in Japan, every day. It's the only thing I drank. You won't find this kind of dumplings in some of the areas of Bhutan. This is from Ha Valley. From Ha Valley, especially. And every year, they celebrate Hinte. Where, like, the Ha people, they make lots of dumplings from the wheat. It's like a big festival of yeah. dumplings? Yeah, it's a kind of a festival for them. So it's called as Hinte. I was gonna finish the rest of these myself. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video because we explored Ha, Ha Valley. We did basically everything you could do here. So, we explored the town, you know, we walked around, we saw different shops, 
I bought a small souvenir and then we kept walking. We did a mini hike, we crossed the suspension bridge, really, really cold, lots of wind. Then we walked for like, I don't know, maybe an hour. Then eventually we made it to the monastery. So a uh, white temple, right? So it's the white temple and then the black temple on top. I mean, you have to do it. If you come out here, these are the things you gotta do. Then we came back to the hotel and we ate the dumplings. And this is food wise, you have to try this. But we dumplings fried and steamed with turnip inside. Mm, so hot, so delicious. You guys, if you love this video, give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below. Subscribe my channel for more awesome travel content. I'll see you in the next travel food adventure in Bhutan. Mm hmm. Mm. Good morning, everyone. I hope you're all doing well. This is David Hoffman from David's Been Here in beautiful Ha Valley, Bhutan. Today, I'm so excited because I'm finally going to see Tiger's Nest. Tiger's Nest is the number one attraction in Bhutan. Most people travel to Bhutan for the main purpose to hike up there. It takes roughly three hours to hike to the top to see the, see the monastery. And basically, the history of it is that in the 8th century, the second Buddha visited the site. And then in the 17th century, they built the monastery. So two and a half hour hike, three hour hike, all the way up. You see it. Then you come down, so total of five hours. And right now we're starting off with breakfast, and I have like the most traditional breakfast here in Ha. So what is this, my man? So it's like a wheat ball. So you open it? Do I just cut it or open it? So cut a small piece. Oh wow, it's just a wheat ball, like a super dense. So you put chilies on it, huh? Super spicy. Hmm. Thank you. <laughs> it's like a super dense wheat ball, basically. Look at this thing. Oh, it's gonna be hard to eat this. Oh, let's break it up by that. Oh, it's too spicy. Mmm. What tea is telling me is to get some of the chicken. So it's chicken curry with chilies. We get a little bit. Mix it with this, right? Mmm. That's nicer. Mm hmm. It is like no masala. It's more like a like a light uh, like a light gravy. Mhm. Mm mm. It's really filling, and I guess this is good for winter, right? It's really cold here. Roughly like negative five right now. Oh, it's hot, man. Guess I'll just get a little bit more. Personally, not my favorite breakfast, but it's decent. If you're really hungry. Eat the whole thing. I'm gonna keep it light today, especially with the chilies. I've been having too many chilies, just like off the chain. So now we have a two hour drive to Pado, and then we're gonna go on the hike. It's gonna be a long day. Are you ready? A buffet pancake and sausage. One last spicy bite, and let's go. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're taking the same road that we came in on. There's two roads to enter Ha. The other one is like super under construction, very bumpy. It's not a good road to go on right now. It would take like five plus hours. So we're taking this road, which is super winding up the mountain. The cool part about this road is that at the very top you have, what's the name of the pass? Chilela. Chilela Pass, which is almost 4,000 meters above sea level. And from there you see both Ha Valley and you see Pado Valley. So yeah, I mean, super winding road all the way to the top. Then when you get up there, you see snow and you go down. On the way, it takes a little longer because you want to stop and get photos. On this way, you know, we're just gonna go straight. We're not gonna stop at all. Just get straight to Paro and then make it to the point where you start hiking to Tiger's Nest. So we'll update you in a bit. We are here in Chalela and today you could actually see the clear view of Mount Jomalhari, the mountain Jomalhari along with mountain Jujudake. Look at that view. Incredible, the Himalayas. All the way at the far end. See that snow? That's the tallest mountain, right? The one at the no, very the second, second tallest, tallest, second tallest, yeah. all the way over there. It's not a it's not a wild horse. It belongs to someone. So usually usually the owner they set the horse free so that they can go and do the grazing. It's a dry season so it's really hard for the animals to get the grasses, the green grass. So the owner they just set the horses free. So after traveling for an hour and forty-five minutes, we're entering Paro Valley. We're about fifteen minutes outside the city center. Once we get there, we have to cross it and go to the other side, and from there, we're gonna get to the base of uh, the trek, right? So, Tiger Nest, it's located in the north of Paro. So, from the town of Paro, it will take around 20 to 25 minutes, right? 
This is the town of Paro. In Paro, you could actually see two different kinds of town. On this side, you could see all the houses are traditional one. And if you go to the other side, it's all concrete, the new buildings. And Paro is also known as the souvenirs of Bhutan. And you'll know why I call it the souvenirs of Bhutan. All the ground floor, the shops are handicraft shops. So it's also the second largest city. So after Thimphu, this is number two, and this is where the airport is. And we're actually gonna stop really fast and buy a mask, this is my last day. I'm just gonna buy a mask at one of these shops, one of them that's open. And this is Paro, beautiful spot. I was actually here on my first day. I ate right here, we we're going to the same shop. So this is the one I want. So how much for that one? Perfect. So I bought the mask. It cost 8,500, which is a little over 100 US dollars, but I think it's worth it. It's huge. They didn't have a medium size. They have very small ones, and then that one. And so I decided to go with that one. I mean, I'm gonna keep it for life. You know, it's like on my wall forever. And then I got some stuff for my for my daughters. And we're ready. Thank you. Now we're driving 20 minutes to the bottom of Tiger's Nest. And as you can see, what we're going through is like small pieces of Paro that go along Paro Valley. So Paro, the main town is where we were just at. And then over here, it's an extension of the town. So basically, it's a farming community, right? So you have houses, you have a few restaurants, you have a rice paddy field. Oh, but dude, I'm excited. Two and a half hour hike though. It's gonna be a long one. <laughs> We're almost here, and you can actually see Tiger's Nest up there in the very top of the rock. Now I understand why it takes so long. <laughs> it's so high, oh my gosh. But the views from there are epic, right? Yes. And in case you guys are hungry, because I know we're going to be hungry, there's a cafeteria halfway, so you can stop and grab something quick and keep going. Yeah. Awesome. Here we go. Let's start this hike. So that's Tiger's Nest right there? Yes. Whoa. It's just there. Up on the rock. <laughs> just there. So you have to go through this entire forest and then eventually walk through and a path. And switching up to the second viewpoint, we need to walk down the stairs all the way to a small bridge. We have a waterfall, then we have to climb up the stairs. 10 minutes in, out of breath already. He told me this will be, will be some points where it's gradual, but right now it's only uphill. Uphill, lots of boulders, rocks, dirt. Roots. I mean, whew. I'm trying to do it as fast as I can. I don't want to do it in three hours. I want to do it like in two. Yeah, I can see why people take three hours. If you guys want to, you can take a pony up here, but it only takes you halfway. You would have to hike the rest. Whew. Woo! Halfway? No. <sighs> I think we're only 20 minutes up, but the sun. Definitely coming here like at 8 in the morning, <laughs> even earlier. It's already 11 something, 11.15. The sun's scorching. I have the sweater on because he's telling me that once we get inside into the forest area, it'll be cold and for sure in Tiger's Nest it'll be cold. <sighs> so I'm 42 minutes in. I'm actually almost halfway there because cafeteria's right here. Tiger's Nest is above. I had to stop though because I haven't stopped. But it's super fast up. It's really hot though. Ooh, it's almost noon, it's scorching. Oh, I need to take a quick break, catch my breath. Intense hike. Scale 110 is one of the most intense I've ever been on, like a 15. So my guide's, uh, my guide tees a little in shock because I made it here in roughly 50 minutes to the halfway mark. He said from here I can do it like another 45. So it'd literally be like under an hour, 45 minutes. And usually people take three hours. Obviously if we're going slow, taking your time, I'm speeding up, but I'm starving. So I'm gonna have something here. And this is the cafe. So it's like a restaurant. It's gonna have some rice, some egg curry, something quick, light. I'm gonna sit right here. Beautiful traditional building. Oh. I need a rest. So this is lunch. Egg, chili, potato, radish, dal, red rice. It's gonna have some red rice. Starving. Burned the hell out of me. Mm-hmm. Best thing to do is drink this. If you did this hike at 8 in the morning, the best thing to do would be go all the way up and then come back down for lunch. But because it is almost noon, I have to eat. Get some of these potatoes. They're good, hot. Mm -hmm. Nice, 
soft. The radish is creamy. Mmm, so good. There's some of the radish like gravy on there. The sauce. Today I'm not gonna eat the chilies. Take a break. This egg. Nice scrambled egg. Nice and oily. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This one's like drenched in butter. Well guys, I'm just gonna enjoy the rest of this and then continue my hike. Mm. Right outside of the cafeteria is a small terrace. You can sit down there, get some awesome views of Tiger's Nest. But I'm good, I'm gonna continue. Still got a long way to go. He said roughly 45 minutes at my speed. So I don't know if I'm gonna be able to, to do it at my speed again because I really ran. Oh, this is a lot steeper. So we have Tiger's Nest right there. Up here, we have a few other temples. So we're almost at the viewpoint. Now it's become more gradual. Trees, lots of shade here. See that nest right there. So I'm guessing once we make the bend here, we'll have the viewpoint right there. Still got this to go to though. I'm out of breath. And now we're starting to see the monastery we saw from the bottom. There's like three or four right here. And then once we get past this ridge right here, we'll have the viewpoint, I hope. Almost, right, 100 meters? Not really 100 meters. More? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I could see it here. I mean, it's a great yeah. shot, but yeah, there's maybe, a few yeah. trees. Yeah. Uh, okay. Oh, there's Tiger's Nest. Woo, look at this. What a view. Tiger's Nest, yes. We made it. Well, we made it to the viewpoint. Still got a bit to go to get actually into it. And by the way, I can't film inside. No photos inside. I just take you to the door and that's it. So am I the fastest ever? No. No? No. <laughs> I had come on. It was like eight years before. We just took like one hour, 15 minutes all the way up. What? One hour, 15 minutes. He was running up. I did it. I got here in 90 minutes and I ate though. Mm -hmm. I, I'm destroyed. Like I'm mm -hmm. dead. But the view, I mean, look at this thing. Incredible. Let's go. Let's go inside. From the top till to the bridge, we have 453. And from the bridge to the monastery, we have 287. Wow. So in total, like when you do it two, four, it may be like 1,500 steps. So something really interesting you guys have to know is that in 1998, there was a big fire. So they rebuilt the entire monastery. But before that, there was no railing and these steps weren't here. So to get here was really risky. I mean, dirt road, and yeah. you can easily fall. I mean, look at that, look at that yeah, boulder. The size of the footpath was small. Oh, sure. This is scary. I mean, even now it's scary. I mean, if you're scared of heights, look at that. <laughs> oh. So we made it all the way to the bottom. Right here we have a waterfall. There's snow here. So it snows here in winter. Wow, look at that. Incredible, and it still hasn't melted. I have not melted. So now we have how many steps? 287. Not bad. 287. Difficult steps. Just counting them. I think it's like 48, 50. <laughs> I don't even know. I'm not counting anymore. I'm exhausted. It's great though. What an experience. So we made it here to security. Now we have to pack up everything in the backpack, put it in a locker, yeah. and that's it. That's it. That's your locker. <laughs> and that's it. We saw Tiger's Nest, 17th century monastery. This place is a must visit. When you come to Bhutan, this is the number one thing you have to do. Try to get it in, you know, maybe the first day. Just go early in the morning. I'd say start at 8 in the morning, hike up all the way, and then see it. It's made up of different shrines dedicated to the second Buddha and it's incredible. I lit a butter lamp, uh, you know, making a prayer basically for my friends, family, and everybody affected by the COVID-19. And uh, yes, we're gonna hike all the way back, all the way back, yeah. make it to the car, and where are we going? And we, we will be going to the fortress of Paro, which is called as Rimpung. Rimpung means a pile of jewels. It was built in 1646 AD. Yeah, so I'm not gonna bore you with the hike. I'll see you in the car. <laughs> Whoa, that was an intense hike down. I thought it was gonna be a lot easier than that, but you can slip so easily. You can outrun, you have to go super slow. Whew. Oh man, that was too much. Okay, let's go to the fortress. Car's right here. 
took me four hours to go up and come down with lunch. Man, man, I made it. You good? Yes. We, I didn't have a Tibetan friend called Tom Tom Galpo. He came to Bhutan and he wandered from like place to place searching for the iron ores. So in Bhutan and Tibet, he built around 108 iron chain bridges. And he was the one to like build that temple in 15th century. So we just crossed the river. What's the name of the river? Dochu. Dochu River, okay. Dochu. So Dochu River, and we're on the other side of Paro. So this is the big valley, right? We're on the other side, up on the mountain, and we're going to the fortress. Now this fortress, the unique thing about it is that it's one of the most beautiful fortresses in the country, and it was built before Tiger's Nest. So 1600s, right? 17th century? Yeah. Another 17th century. Everything was built in the 17th century in Bhutan, mostly. That was like the height of the kingdom. Yes. It's the time where the unifier, the Tibetan scholar, unified the whole country. So in order to unify, he built like lots of fortresses in and around Bhutan. The fortress of Paro, it was built in 1646 AD. And the name of the fortress is called as Rimpum, which means a pile of jewels. Woo! It's windy here. Super windy. Wow. What a beautiful fortress. Yeah, it reminds me of the one in Punaka. Very similar. I love that. So that's like rank, right? Yeah, it's called Skopne in Bhutan. Seminal scarf, depending upon different ranks. Like I said, we have like different colors of scarf. For the commoner like us, we get the white one. And the white symbolizes the purity. <laughs> the four directional kings. And I hope you still remember the Wheel of Life. Yes, the six dimensions, right? Or yes. six uh... kingdoms or realms. God, Jimmy God. As we enter the fortress, you can see it's very, very windy right now because we're by the river. And the fortress is a little smaller than the Punaka fortress and the Thimpu fortress. As we walk through, you see the different uh, gods here. Here, this part is for the administration, all the head offices of the district is located here and this is the central tower the central tower usually divides the administration and the monastic body so basically every fortress is the same they all have an administration area and they have a monastic body and then right here so that tower is used by the monks and what i noticed is the biggest difference between all the fortresses is that there's a lot of color up here and what is this building this was residences no no it's administration offices oh that's administration offices right there okay administration offices monks use this so the dormitories or like the residences it's, all the other side. it's the other side okay oh beautiful colors i mean the colors they just don't end so every single house has the same windows and always painted with these colors yeah and with all the, the letters right yes none of the other fortresses had like a lower layer right like a lower uh, level right the total number of monks in this fortress is around 160 you should check down check by the side of the river you could see a palace that has been built in 1900 by the governor of Paro and nowadays when the royal families they come here they use the palace I mean this is the best view of Paro yeah best view you have the main town right there and then you have the, all the rice fields mm -hmm. you have the river gorgeous can you see the airport down there Oh, there it is. Yes. Right there. Here, it's a ritual cake. Usually, most of the ritual cakes in Bhutan are made from wheat and cooked rice. The pattern, which looks like a flower, it's been made from butter, cow butter. So the reason you see roosters inside the fortresses is because in olden days, there was no alarm clocks, obviously. So they use the rooster to wake them up. So that's their alarm clock. So that goes off like at 5, 6 in the morning. So they wake up early. Cold is good. So that was all the offerings, right? Yeah. A kind of a, it's a layer cake. What is for you? All right, so we did it. Today we drove from Ha Valley all the way mm -hmm. to Paro. Yeah. Started off with some delicious breakfast. It wasn't breakfast, big dough that you yeah. add chili on top. Mm -hmm. Unique, uh, I don't know, it wasn't really my favorite. <laughs> I, I like more like, I don't know, some of the easy stuff. But yeah, then after that we drove two hours over to Paro. Then we went to Street Tires Nest. 
we hiked up, we it took us like, I think like two hours, and we ate lunch at the same time, so we had a good lunch. I mean, it's just a cafeteria, just standard food, not like crazy chilies and stuff. Yes. Not too much uh, heavy meal in terms of non-veg, mostly veg. The veg. Mostly veg, and then we made it up to Tiger's Nest. Incredible experience there. The monastery is once in a lifetime. When you come to Bhutan, you have to go there. When you go inside, you see different shrines dedicated to the second Buddha, which is the one who basically went there and uh, got rid of the demons, right? Yeah. Got rid of the bad spirits. And converted Paro Valley into Buddhism. Okay. It was in the 8th century, and the temple of Tiger Nest, it was built in 1692, 17th century. And one thing that's really cool when you go there, look for the cave, your guide should show you the cave, and that is where they used to see a tiger, and that's why they call it Tiger's Nest. Yes. And then after that, we came here, this incredible fortress. Beautiful, such an experience. You have to visit all the fortresses. Visit Punaka, Timpu, and Paro. And guys, if you love this video, thumbs up. Thumbs up. <laughs> Comment below. Subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content. I'll see you in the next travel food adventure in Bhutan. Peace. Good evening everyone, this is David Hoffman from David's Bin here in beautiful Paro, Bhutan. Today I'm actually gonna take you to try some craft beer in Bhutan. Craft beer and craft beer food. And what is the name of this brewery? It's called Snamge. And I would say this is the only brewery in Bhutan who makes beer from the red rice. I think it's the only brewery in the world that makes beer from red rice. Red rice, I think Red so, rice, because yeah. red rice is a staple in Bhutan. That's yes. the way you guys produce the most of. Yes. The white rice comes in from India. Mm -hmm. And I tried this beer the other day when I was in Timpu. Timpu. Delicious dark ale, but they have more varieties. They don't just have like four. They have like six or seven. And then the food is going to be amazing. Look at the view. You have the view right here over the airport and my flight is there for tomorrow morning. <laughs> All right, let's go try some beer. Love the smell. Oh, incredible. And there's a spot? Beautiful. Love the, love everything. It's always wood, no? Bhutan is all wood. Wood, 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 everything. Where do I want to sit? I don't know, how are we doing this? All right there? That's good. So Finsu, you're gonna give me a tour? <laughs> Finsu's a little shy, <laughs> but it's good. <laughs> You're nervous? Nah, don't be nervous. Now this is a brewery. Look at this. Huge fermenting tanks. The brew system. What's up guys? Good evening. And welcome to Namgi Artisanal Brewery. So I will introduce myself. So I'm Pinto. And working as a FM supervisor. So today I'm going to explain about our brewery. So we'll start from here. So we have uh, three main tanks out here. So this uh, middle one is mash tank, water tank, and the whole pool tank. And these two are water tank, hot water and cold water. So firstly, mash tank, we add water and barley malt. Mash for two hours to attract the ingredients in mash tank. After that, we turn to water, water tank. So in water, what we do is we uh, segregate the ingredients in water tank. From water, we turn to whirlpool. So in whirlpool, we add herbs. Half brings aroma and bitter taste to beer and we boil for 93 degrees in whirlpool tank. After that we turn to fermentation. So in total we have uh, 13 fermentation tanks. So total we produce here uh, 9 types of beer. Here in fermentation tank, here we add yeast and keep it for 15 to 20 days in fermentation tank. After that we store it bottling and cakes. Oh and cakes, and cakes. Yes. yeah yeah. So you have small cakes, these are like Quarter kegs or something yeah. like that, right? So we Very have small. 20 liter, 10 liter. So these are the, uh, these five are storage tank. So help out this uh, cap. We fill up these cakes. After that, we take it to bar and connect by tap. So by tap, we pour the glass. So these are the cakes, right? This is <laughs> awesome. This is the bottling system. Yeah. Great. We have uh, total nine tests, but in bottle, we have only four types only. So we have red rice, dark ale, wheat, and apple cider only. Okay. So rest are you'll get by uh, tap only. The other five beers, you can only try them here. That's sort of how it works with breweries. You know, they produce, you know, 10, 20 beers, but only like three or four hit market. Uh, on, you know, so you can buy it at a supermarket. Mm -hmm. The rest, you have to come here and try it here, yes, right? By tap, tap only. Awesome. This, so this is the whole place. Mm -hmm. Wow. And this is, this is Bhutanese. This is just like Bhutanese. Bhutanese, yes. Oh, wow. brand is Bhutanese. We're walking through the fermenting tanks and right here we have local pale ale. 
we have wheat beer, we have wheat beer, another one, pineapple beer, what else we got? We got dark ale, oh I can't wait for that dark ale, that looks so good, milk stout, phenomenal, Druk pineapple, Druk pineapple, what is that? We're gonna try all of them now, right? All nine? We try all of them? Yes sir. All right, I think I, the milk stout is what I'm gonna love. Milk stout, dark ale, my favorite. I'm gonna serve you sir. <laughs> Let's try this beer, I can't wait. Bhutanese beer. Most people don't think about a craft beer in Bhutan. Like people don't think there's craft beer. But there's craft beer here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so firstly we'll serve you a red rice lager, which is made of our Bhutanese local red rice. So alcohol content is 6.5. And second, dark ale. And third, wheat beer, IPA, Indian pale ale. Pineapple goose, milk stout. <laughs> the milk stout? Yes. Great. Milk stout. And apple cider, uh, pilsner, and lastly, local pale. Oh. So before we have uh, only eight types of beer. So recently we added one more flavor that is local pale. So now we have nine types of beer. Okay, so how do I start? This one? Yes, you, you can start from here. The red rice? Yeah. Oh wow, it's smooth. So it's actually a very unique taste. It, it's very different, a little ricey, not like ara, but more beer. Rice and barley. Mm. That is my favorite. I tried this the other day, the dark ale. See, I feel like this is almost like a, like a dunkel, you know, like a German beer, right? Like a dark German beer. I could do another, a pint of that, the wheat beer. Mmm, it's a nice light wheat beer. Yes. So the red rice is 6.5, the wheat beer is 4.5. Rice and rice. And this is very small, it's like what, two or three ounces? Indian IPA, pale. Indian pale oil, Bhutanese style. Never tried before. Very bitter taste. <laughs> oh, but I like it, it's hoppy. Oh, it's nice. This is, this is everybody's favorite, you know, the IPA. IPA is for craft beer, IPA. You know, I started beer with the IPA. I actually started with the Guinness style and then I went towards IPA and I did a lot of IPA. Nothing is like really high in alcohol, right? Yeah. Everything is low, 6.5 and under, right? High so low is 6 point. Pineapple goose? Mm. Mm. You taste the pineapple. It's almost like a, I don't even know what this call is. It's almost like a blonde, like a blonde. Right? Like, like pineapple, very beachy. It's a little bit sour. No? Wait, you know what? <laughs> yes, exactly. It's a, little sour. it's a little sour. A little bit. Next one is gonna be my favorite, the milk stout. This is gonna be the best. Like American yeah. taste? Mmm. Yeah, like you said, espresso beans, yeah. you know? Oh, that's amazing. Apple cider? Oh, that's good. Mm. I like it. Usually breweries don't serve like cider, but it's great. It's nice, it's light, a little cloudy. My brother-in-law's family owns an orchard in Northern Spain, so we drink a lot of cider up there. A lot of cider. It's a little different. It's not beer, obviously. It's just like, like a thicker cider. That one's just more like light, but it hits you really hard. Pilsner. Pilsner. Yes. And by the way, the water is the key to the beer. Bad water, bad beer. Good water, good beer. Here, Himalayans, you know, the snow, great water. It's super light. Oh, it's great. I drink like 10 of those. That is like an awesome Pilsner. It's, it's probably the lightest Pilsner I've ever had. Local pale ale. So what'd you guys do that made it so local? Mm. Mm. It's light. It's, um, I don't know what to say about it. I mean, in terms of like, compared to the IPA, the difference is this is way less hoppy. That's usually how pale is, you know? I mean, I like the red rice, I like the milk, I like the local. They're all really good, but I think those are like, these two are my favorites for sure. These Asian two. Story. Yeah. I think I'm gonna take another one of these. One more. Like my friend said, chili cheese, pork, potato and cheese. Spinach soup, uh, cucumber salad with spices, and something else in there. And then we also have right here, amazing, but we uh, pancakes and rice. 
So do I just eat this alone or? Mm. Dip in your chili and cheese. Dip in chili cheese? Maybe get some chilies, right? A few? It is my last name, Bhutan. Mmm. Mmm. This one's delicious and not too spicy. Mm -hmm. Not too spicy. Let me get a little more. Like that. Mmm. So good. Mm hmm. And also, what's amazing is that this set menu. Comes with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven things and costs like four fifty. Yeah. Four fifty new. So like seven, eight dollars, right? Yeah. It's a pretty great deal. I mean you eat for that much, dinner. And here we have the spinach. Do I do I drink it like this? Mmm. A little spicy. Also herbs in here. But it has a numbing chili. Wow. I could do the numbing every day. Obviously, I'm gonna take a break because. I've been doing it for like eight straight days. My stomach isn't happy. Your stomach is going to be better from tomorrow. So what they've told me is that I'm like eating chilies like straight. They don't do that. They mix it with rice like nonstop. See, I don't. I barely touch the rice. They keep putting it in, putting it in, putting it in, and mixing it. That like coats your stomach a little bit. Helps you digest it better. I like it like this though, so straight. Like chili cheese to the mouth. Mm. Mm. The best thing to do is add the buttwheat pancake. Go in there and break off a piece. Indian style. Dip. Oh yeah. It's so good. My man eats a mountain of rice every single time we eat. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Fuck me, right? <laughs> <laughs> so T told me to add some of the pork to the rice. We made basically the gravy, right? Like that. All of it. Try some of that. I love this restaurant. Mm. Oh wow. This is a creamy gravy. This is the first one I've had like this. Dude, this feels like India. This one? Exactly like India. Mmm. So good. Flavorful. Nice and light. Not cr too crazy on the spices, no chilies here. Nice and chunky and fatty. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. The non veg really here in Bhutan, oh, it really is the best. Now it's hot, no? A little hot. Yeah. The problem with the chilies is sometimes it affects your stomach the wrong way. You know? Yesterday, all three of us. Or two days ago, we ate the easy. Oh. The breakfast time, right? Mm hmm. I could, like, only able to eat just a little bit. You still felt bad. Two of you guys, you are the one like, who have been eating too many of that chili salsa. So I haven't tried the potato and cheese yet. So I'll dive in here. Mmm. Mmm. Ice cream potatoes. A little chili. Mm hmm. So they add processed cheese and fresh, fresh cow cheese. My boy here loves the rice. <laughs> but it's only white rice, it ain't red rice. <laughs> he goes crazy with it. For sure. That's his second full plate of rice. <laughs> and I haven't even touched my rice. <laughs> and I'm getting full, dude. <laughs> Last but not least. Cucumber salad with some spices and some cheese. Mmm. Mmm. So like crumbly. Oh, this is this is like another like Greek salad style. Look at that. Mmm. I love how the cheese is like in bits and pieces. And the chili is there. Oh. <laughs> He really didn't want the chili cheese. Oh, it's my last night. It's the last time I'm gonna eat this for a long time. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to eat until tomorrow morning. <laughs> my friends always like, I had dinner, I'm not eating till breakfast. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, the food's so good here. So good. It's spicy, it's creamy, it's authentic. Oh, you have to go to Bhutanese food in this brewery. Oh. 
Mm. When you come to Bhutan, most people go to the hotels and they eat the, like the buffet. And that's like Western, Indian, because you hear it's all Indians because they have like, I think like 80% of, of the tourists that come are Indian. But I highly recommend going all out and trying traditional Bhutanese food every day, all day long if you can. You know, the chili cheese might be too spicy, the easy might be too spicy, everything else is fine, you know, really good. This was an incredible meal. Like everything was so good. Everybody's like melting here. This brewery is awesome. Beers are so good. The only brewery in Bhutan that brews red rice beer. Red rice beer. Never tried before. And there's also multiple breweries in Bhutan. But this is the one you have to go to in Paro. Paro. When you come to Paro, you have to come to Nange Artisanal Brewery. Nine different beers. My favorite for sure was the red rice and the milk stop. Dark ale as well. Oh, so good. Well, guys, if you love this video, please give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below. Share my channel for more awesome travel content. And when you come to Bhutan, do everything I did. It's just the, the way to go. David's been here. Let's go. Hi, everyone. This is David Hoffman from David's Been Here. Today is March 13th, 2020. And the reason I'm making this video is because I want to talk to you guys about how serious the COVID-19 or coronavirus is. Um, you know, I entered this country on March 5th. That night, there was one American gentleman, 76 year old, that was, you know, positive for coronavirus. So 90 people were quarantined. Uh, luckily, he's better now. But since then, the situation around the world has escalated. The United States, um, two days ago, declared their closing flights from Europe tonight. So uh, Friday, the March, March 13th. And India declared they're closing their borders to foreigners today as well. Um, around 12 p.m. GMT time. So I had to sort of escape the coronavirus. I have to, do, I did everything I could. I changed my flight to this morning so I can get into India in time so I can then fly out as fast as possible to Doha and then to Miami because we don't know if the United States is gonna close their border completely to the whole world. So they're close to Europe um, and then next is Middle East and then eventually the whole world if this, this thing doesn't stop. You know, this pandemic is serious. I wanna show you guys how I'm traveling to, to avoid being infected and yeah, just trying to stay clean as possible. So I have this, the Respro mask. This is how I'm gonna travel for the next uh, 50 hours, something like that. Respro mask. Use hand sanitizer every second I can, you know? Whenever I need to put it on, whenever I touch anything, use it. And from the bathroom, wash my hands for 20 seconds at the minimum. And when I actually get to my seat, I use Clorox wipes to clean everything. Okay, so you clean it all down. Uh, the seat, the, the TV, the table. I mean, that I think this is like, it's the dirtiest place in the plane is that table. Um, also the seat belt, I mean, everything. Just clean it all. And yeah, so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm going to Power International Airport, which is across the street. I fly to Calcutta, it's a one hour flight. I'll be there at eight in the morning. Then I booked a quick like hotel nearby just so I can just post up because I have a 16 hour connection. I don't leave until 3 a.m. tonight, like, you know, basically the next day. I fly directly to Doha, five hour flight. I have a 90 minute connection, so straight to my gate. And then from there, 16 hour flight to Miami and I just want to get home, I want to see my kids. You know, I'm staying calm. Uh, I know that this is just, um, you know, one of those times in history where we all like come together as a society and try to relax and, you know, take it one day at a time and not overreact and not panic. Well guys, it's gonna be a long day like my daughter says. It's rock and roll. Morning guys. Ready to go? Ready. Okay. Freezing, it must be like zero right now. Nito, I'm gonna miss you, bro. I'm gonna miss you too, man. So, miss, we will miss you. It's unfortunate, huh? <coughs> yes. Yeah, so I had to leave two days early. Two days early. So we lost the time we were gonna have here in Paro to explore everything. Yeah. Uh, we did everything we could in terms of tires and us and the fortress, but there's so much more and lots of food. Oh, man, it's so early, so dark. And this is the airport. Mask on, mask on. Woo! Now it's cold. Fist bump. <laughs> <laughs> See you guys. Okay. Take care. First step, check in. Paro International Airport, the only airport in Bhutan. There's actually three domestic airports, but it's the only international airport. I'm gonna be sad, I'm gonna be sad. 
I see tea or noodle, noodle anymore. All right, so I'm here at the boarding gate, gate two. As you can see, every single person has a mask on. And we had a little bit of a situation here. You know, we all verified 12 GMT would be like tonight. It actually is right now. Like literally right now is GMT, but we already called Kokoda Airport and they made sure that I could enter. And they're letting me enter. Worst comes to worst, I stay in immigration until my flight tonight. I have no problem. I mean, I just want to go home, you know. The biggest, you know, scariest thing for me right now is that there's a big chance that I wouldn't be able to get on this flight. And then I would just like get stuck here. I don't even know what I would do. It's crazy. But uh, yeah, guys, we should be boarding in the next like 10, 15 minutes. And let's go. Let's go to Kokoda. Let's make this happen. Bye, Let's go to India. Yes, it is crazy right now. Royal Bhutan. Hello. Hello. So I've ever clock swipes. Remember to clean everything. Clorox wipes. Clorox wipes. Clean everything. You know, your seatbelt is the key. You know, because you're always gonna touch it, open it, take it off. You know. In case I didn't tell you guys before, this is the most dangerous airport in the world to land in. It's a very small strip in the middle of the mountains, Paro International Airport. And here we go, guys. Calcutta. Here we come. Here we are in the sky. Do you see beautiful mountains? Over there, we see Everest. And Everest is in Nepal and also is in China, but you see it's on the border. And then, you know, Sikkim. And then if you go north, that is Tibet, China. Incredible. There's only a one hour flight, so we should be there really fast. It's already been 10 minutes. The views are epic though. Wow. This is probably the prettiest views. This is probably the prettiest views I've ever seen on a flight. That's it, one hour flight, super quick. Let's go cut up, let's land. Thank you, thank you. So now we have to go through immigration, but here it's gonna be a little more tricky because they banned borders and uh, because of coronavirus, everything's a lot longer. But let's see, that's it guys, we made it in. Oh man, it was a little complicated there. Um, they asked you a billion questions, you know. Basically try to see what I'm leaving, where am I going, I have to you know, explain I'm going to a hotel until I'm leaving. Yeah, so, so crazy. I mean, this, this thing's for real. Oh man, and everybody's super nervous. Everybody sees me, it's like, man, they're shutting me. But um, yeah, getting out of my bag now for the hotel. I'm actually going like four hours early, checking out the 12, but what can I do? Let's see if I can get in. All right guys, it is way too hot here in India. Chop this hat, sweater. Wow, it's brutal. So this uh, this airport is pretty wild. As you can see, uh, there was actually a guy going backwards over here. Some taxi driver, pretty crazy. But yeah, let me uh, order Uber. I'm in the Uber stand, so that's number two. And then they have Ola, which Ola is like the Indian version of Uber. This is Kolkata, the capital of West Bengal. I love this city. I've been here like three times, my fourth time, but today I'm not going out. I'm staying indoors. You know, India has 70 plus cases of coronavirus. And in reality, how many people have been tested? You only get tested if you're sick, and that's that's the problem. So when I get home, I'm gonna get tested right away just to make sure that my family's safe and then obviously wait 14 days before I like really go out in public. I think I'm gonna quarantine myself in my house. So I think I just have to do it. And uh, yeah, I mean today I'm just gonna go to the hotel, chill, and that's it. It is it, it is it, the oil tot house. Where is it? Over here? And this is my room for the day. At the Olu Townhouse. It's like a two-star hotel. It's not that bad. I mean, it's good. It's fine. I mean, for me, the main thing is that it's clean, which it is clean. Door has a lock, right? And I'm safe. And it's only a 15 minute drive from the airport. If I wanted to go all the way to Kakuta, it would be like 45 minutes to an hour. No need to go into the chaos. That's where everybody is. And obviously with the coronavirus, I just want to stay away from people right now. I'm just trying to stay here, relax. I'm going to be here the whole day. I got uh, roughly, what time is it right now? So I have like 14 hours before check-in. So I'm going to post up probably like six hours. And they also have a kitchen here. So all I have to do is press uh, nine. And this is it. Roti, parata, alu. Chicken tikka masala, I mean they have non-stop stuff and they have Chinese rice and noodles. So I'll give you an update in a bit. Oh, I need a rest. To be honest, I couldn't sleep. I stayed here for like four hours. I stayed like till like 12 something. And then uh, my friend Volpe, where are you? Contacted me and I was like, damn dude. I gotta miss the opportunity to like hang out with him and maybe make some videos. 
So we went with the mask, we used hand sanitizer, and uh, we made it. We did a few videos together. It's gonna be amazing. And yeah, guys, putting my mask back on, getting my stuff. It is 11.30 right now, going to the airport, gotta check in. It opens at 12, I wanna get there a little early, so I'll be first in line. And hopefully I get upgraded the business class because I paid full fair price for this. I paid a lot of money for this. I paid a few thousand dollars for this flight just to get home. Uh, my ticket with American Airlines, because I bought with American Airlines, I bought with Miles, and I couldn't get it moved to this day, and I had to get out this day. So, spent me, cost me money, but it's gonna be good. Guys, it's 11.40 at night. I've been here for roughly 15 hours. Crazy. What a layover. And yeah, we're on the way to the airport now. It's, uh, what is it? Like 10 minutes away, right, right, right there. Close, I'm so tired, can't wait. Hopefully get upgraded. <laughs> so what I'm praying for. Be in the front alone, away from everybody, great. All right, just wanna get home. It's gonna be 24 hours, six hours, 90 minutes, and then, 16 straight. This guy's car, all the doors just closed. Close and open. Thank you. It's crazy that I see a lot of flights that are canceled. A lot of flights are canceled. That's a scary sign. Fucking scary. In every single airport in India, you have to have your passport and your ticket. Like ticket on hand in your email or in hand and paper. It's the only way in. This place is crazy right now. There's like no one here, literally. Half the flights are canceled. I can't even believe this. I'm getting out just in the nick of time. I mean, we're all closing borders in the next 30 days. I feel like this is gonna happen. Let's see, all these are canceled. Well, so my flight, so number five, they're gonna open soon. It's almost, it's almost midnight. We have five minutes right here. But it's crazy, it's crazy how many flights are canceled. This is like the most insane two days of my life. I think everybody feels the same. Oh, March 13th. March 13th is when it all started. Look at this. Hong Kong, Kuala Lumpur, Kunis, and Bangkok. Basically everywhere with coronavirus is right now. Hot spot. Okay, so we're in F, and I'm probably gonna go through priority. So I'm gonna get in really quick, because I have a platinum with American, so let's see. Priority lane, where is it? All right, so I didn't get upgraded business class, so I did get business class lounge, at least something. So we're gonna wait in here for like two hours. So I didn't even know there was a business class lounge upstairs. First time, first time, thank God. All right, at least something, you know? I mean, oh man. I'm being extra cost with a t-shirt. <laughs> uh, so yeah, business class lounge. The reason I got it is I'm flying with American Airlines. Let's see what it's all about. Hey, how you doing? I'm a scout. Thank you so much. Awesome. So what do we have here? Food? Right now we're serving dinner. Okay, perfect. This is amazing. This business class lounge is sick. Look at this. Two different dining halls. So on the left, you have the buffet where you can eat. And then over here, you have the bar where we can chill. There's only one other person here, only one person in business class. I'm so excited. Look at this. Thank you. I'll come back for another one later. So many eat some dinner. I'm starving. What do we have here? Lahori chicken, and mustard paprika chicken, Shanghai chicken, assorted non veg sandwich, chili coriander sauce, subs diwani handi, I don't know what that is, paneer tikka masala, dal makna, dal makni, dom polao, I mean, pumpkin soup, so then. So I'm going straight chicken and paneer. Favorite combination. Still have like an hour before boarding. I'm good. Look at this. Yeah. We got Indian food buffet at night. Oh, this is the best. Being in India and some beer. All right, guys. I'm hungry. Oh, thank you. Water? Great, man. You're the best. <laughs> this guy's drawing water. Got my beer, Kingfisher beer. Oh, it's a nice beer. Sam. It's one of my favorite beers. My boy Sam. Amazing veneer. Wow. Doing my Shanghai chicken now. Fried chicken, real crunchy, sweet. Mm -hmm. 
It's almost like a sweet and sour. Less sweet, a little more spicy. Mm -hmm. That's the mustard one. That was okay. This is the best. Put them together. Combine them. Veg and non veg mix. I can't believe how long I've been driving already. Like, I woke up at 4 in the morning. And I think I'll be there in the morning. Mm -hmm. Alright, so I got some... I don't even know what it is. Something I didn't get before. Yeah, it's more veneer. It's like a creamy veg curry. Veneer. Mm -hmm. Cause cheese every day. It's what you do on a huge layover. Like I went and made three videos. I did it myself. We used hand sanitizer nonstop. And made even the funny puri guy did use hand sanitizer. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's scary time, guys. Last one. I know we gotta fight the COVID-19. Gotta like... No, I'm joking. I mean, I'm really far from everybody. Anybody who's near me is like 20 feet away. Then I'm good. Pray to God. Recording in 10 minutes. I'm priority, so I go in first. All right, the plus. Hey, thanks guys. Has that right here? You can never be too careful. Yes, sir. Where are you going? Doha. Doha, from there? Miami. Miami, United States. Thanks, guys. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I actually want to take the star really fast before you board that flight. Flash it for my kids. There's some cool stuff in there. That's Bengali? Yeah. How much is this one? 1850 1877 So I think that's like $24 US. $24. Thank you. So the mask is the best. I've been here so many times I don't have a Bengali mask, so I decided for 10 bucks. 10 bucks in the airport. I got some shoes for my baby, two year old, and four year old. Corona, Corona, we gotta, we gotta stay safe. We gotta stay safe. <laughs> Everybody in India is using hand sanitizer. Use it. Got it. Bengali mask for my wall. This is gonna be epic. We're going to number five. Let's travel home. It's just time to run. Now, where's number five? Where is that? Okay, it's over there. Let's go. They're boarding. Oh, great. <laughs> They carry my bag now. That's good. It's not working. I guess there's not, not enough people in this airport. Let's go home. Seat row number 19 to 27. Thank you. Zilla ka number hai? Hey, how you doing? Hi, sir. Mr. Hoffman. Thank you. Thank you. This is my entire row for the next six hours. I got the whole thing. We boarded the flight, got a six hour flight. I'm gonna probably watch like a movie for like half an hour and pass out. I need to sleep like this flight. This is the hard one. This is the one you need to sleep the most because then the next one you like up and it's like, it's, it's a lot harder than 16 hours. I slept the whole flight guys. I cannot believe it, but that's what I need to do. I sleep the whole thing. Wow, six straight hours. We're landing in Doha in like three minutes. We have a 90 big connection, and then we have a long 16 hours. Wow, I'm so tired. And after a six hour flight, we're landing in Qatar. Wow, it is like foggy, smoggy out there. I don't even know, that could be like a sandstorm or something. Half past six. Half past six? Yeah. Perfect, thank you. Woo! Let's go. Okay, so I went to two counters. One, I had to pay $1,000 to upgrade. The other one, I need X amount of Q miles or Qatar miles. Unfortunately, I don't have that. I only have American Airlines miles. So I went straight to the gate. I really wanted to go take a shower in the lounge, but it's really unfortunate because that 90 minute connection really was an hour. So I had to fly. D3 is where we're going right now. D3. I've been invited to customers, starting with privileged card, platinum, gold, silver. 
One word to emerge and support members to board the convenience the priority boarding line. So we're boarding over 100 seats empty in economy, 18 seats empty in business class. They told me to go to 21 or 23, it's completely empty. So we have a whole roll, a whole roll. Okay. So because I have this whole entire row, I'm like disinfecting everything on my car swipe. Everything, TVs, tables, I mean, every single thing I can that I'm gonna touch, because I usually touch multiple um, tables. You know, when I have this whole row, I can like set it up and like move things, so I have to clean it off. And by the way, everybody has a mask on. Like, almost this entire airport, every single person has a mask on. But I don't know if everybody has hand sanitizer and a car wipes. I doubt it. I mean, I haven't seen not one person clean the plane, and that's one thing you have to do right now. Clean your area completely, disinfect it all. And yeah, hand sanitizer for every time you touch anything else. Well, good morning, guys. It's uh, it's like uh, seven, eight hours in, and we still have, let me see right here. So, we still have seven hours and 27 minutes to go. Oh my god, this is very tiring. Um, but yeah, everybody is wearing the mask, hardcore, everybody's sleeping with the mask. I, I passed out and had a mask on. I literally just had like, a quick snack, so I'm gonna put this back on. But uh, that's really, really intense. Um, just you know, knowing uh, how crazy the situation is with the coronavirus. You know, we have no idea what's about to happen. But uh, you know, the next 30 days are gonna be really. Uh, you know, we're gonna know everything in the next 30 days, especially how fast it's growing, how fast it's spreading, and uh, yeah, the pandemic's real, guys. So once we land, I don't know what the situation is going to be, how intense immigration is going to be. I mean, I have global entry, but still, just because of this, it might not be so easy. Um, but yeah, once we get in, I'll let you know how it went. Yeah, I'm going to sleep a little more. I'm so tired. This is the longest travel day of my life. Alright, so I made it to Miami. After 50 hours of traveling, God, this has been the longest two days of my life. Travel from Bhutan. Uh, over to India, got in. Thank God it was the last flight into India before they closed the border. Then I uh, had like a, what was that, like a 16 hour connect. So I boy at Volpe, made a few videos. We stayed really safe with the mask and hand sanitizer. They were really taking it seriously there in India. Hand sanitizer everywhere and every table. And before you enter any restaurant, they like test to see if you have a fever. Basically, they put something next to your face. Then I flew straight to Miami, 16 hours, or well, six hours to Doha, 20, 90 minutes, and then 16 hours to Miami. It was uh, really long and I'm, uh, I'm glad to be back. I'm gonna basically self-quarantine the next 14 days. I'm gonna stay in my house. I won't even see my parents. They're over 60 years old and I don't wanna risk anything. And uh, they say not to get really tested unless you feel symptoms. I feel good, I'm not sick. So yeah, I'll just wait. And guys, if you love this video, please give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below, subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content. I'll see you in the next travel food adventure. Show in the world somewhere soon, hopefully in the next you know, two months.